Intermediate Accounting 6i Non-Monetary Exchanges. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, the email, and the website. <coughs> Excuse me. And the book, Cost Accounting for Dummies, now available on Amazon, published by Wiley. So what I would like to do is to talk about non-monetary exchanges in a few steps. So the first is a non-monetary exchange with boot. Now I want to say at the beginning that FMV, I'm referring to fair market value. And there is a great source here, a McGraw-Hill page, that I use to put this together. So first, some general rules. Assets received are generally valued at fair market value. And we can, in fact, take it a little step further and say that the new asset is valued at the fair market value of the old asset, the asset you gave up, plus cash paid. I talk a lot about the idea that when you're computing a gain or a loss, many times that is the plug figure you need to help debits equal credits, and that's the case here. The last thing you should do, and you'll see it in the examples, is to find out what credit or debit you need to balance in the journal entry, and that's going to be your gain or your loss. So example one. A and B agree to exchange machines, and we're given A's information. The cost and the accumulated depreciation of the old asset, the cash they pay for the new asset, the fair market value of the asset given up. The question is, first question, how should A record the transaction for the exchange of machines? Well, <coughs> they're going to take the Old fair market value plus the cash paid. And if I scroll up just a little bit, you'll see the connection. They paid 430000 They gave up an asset with a fair market value of 150 Gets us to 580 They remove the accumulated depreciation from the books for the old asset by debiting. The cash they paid for the new asset, 430000 They take off the cost of the old asset, 500000 So cash goes out the door. We credit. We credit to remove an asset at the original cost. We debit to remove the accumulated depreciation. Now, in order to make debits equal credits in total, we need a credit of $50,000. And because it's a credit, that's a gain on the exchange of the assets. Let's change the figure a little bit and say that the fair market value of the asset given up is only $75,000. And the question is, how should A record the transaction? Say basic steps. We take the fair market value of the asset given up 75 plus Cash paid 430. That's the value of the new asset. We debit to create an asset. We take the old asset off the books at 500,000. We take accumulated depreciation off the books for the old asset by debiting. We credit cash, cash credit, for the amount that we pay for the new asset, 430. And to make debits equal credits, in this case, we need a debit of 25000 and that's a loss on exchange of assets. Let's make it just a little bit more complicated and assume it's a non-monetary exchange with a new term, no commercial substance. Generally, <coughs> a gain is only posted if the exchange has commercial substance, and now we need to define commercial substance. And commercial substance means that the future cash flows change as a result of the exchange of assets. For example, the new asset that you received generates more cash flow than the old asset that you gave up. That would have commercial substance. If you exchange a truck that's got 50,000 miles on it for another truck with 50,000 miles, they both help you create the same cash flow. That does not have commercial substance. So, 
Let's say that A and B exchange land. There's no commercial substance. So A has cost for the land, also book value of $2.5 million, because you have to keep in mind that land does not depreciate. Therefore, book value equals fair market value. They pay $500,000 for the new asset in cash. <coughs> the fair value of the asset they gave up was $4.5 million. And the question again is, how does A record the transaction? Well, the value of the new asset is a little bit different. It's the value, in this case, of the old asset at cost or book value. Same thing for land. $2.5 million plus the cash paid for the new asset, $3 million. We know what happened with cash. That's the easy part of the entry. I always suggest to people to make a journal entry. The first thing you should ask yourself is, did anything happen to cash? In this case, cash was paid, credit cash, half a million. The cost or book value of the asset that we gave up was $2.5 million. So you can see it's a balanced entry. And you can also see that there's no gain or loss recorded. No gain or loss recognized. <clears throat> what if, on the other hand, cash was received instead of paid? Cash was received instead of paid. And the question is, how should A record the transaction? Because we learned up here at the top, if I scroll up, gain is only posted if the exchange has commercial substance. So let's keep that in mind. So we have to assume here that it does have commercial substance. So how should A record the transaction? I'm going to scoot up here just a little bit so we can see the original data. Two things going on. First of all, we're recognizing an a gain on exchange. And secondly, the way we record the value of the new asset is different than we've seen before. We take the cost of the new asset, $2.5 million, plus a gain recognized that I'll get to in a minute, less the cash received, which is half a million. Now let's figure out how we recognize that gain. Well, the gain calculation is the asset that you gave up less the book value of the asset that you gave up is a gain of $2.5 million. Now, if I scroll down just a little bit farther, we've got to make a distinction between a realized gain, which is what you post to your financials, and a recognized, a realized gain, which is the actual gain. <coughs> Plain old vanilla gain, ignoring the accounting and a recognized gain which gets posted to the accounting records. Let me say that again. The recognized gain gets posted to the accounting records. So what was realized? Well, we gave up an asset of half a million. We're debiting for an asset with a fair value of a half a million. We're crediting to remove an asset of 2.5 million. To make debits equal credits, we need a credit of 2.5 million. That's a gain. What we're debiting is greater than what we're crediting. However, how much of the gain, the $2.5 million, do we recognize? We only recognize the gain to the extent of the cash value compared with the fair market value of the asset that we gave up. And it's a difficult concept. So in this case, we got half a million dollars in blue. The fair value of the asset that we gave up was $5 million. So 500 in blue divided by 5 million in green is 10%. We multiply 10% times the gain of 2.5 million, and we get a recognized gain of $250,000, 10% of 2.5 million. That recognized gain is part of the debit that we make for the new asset. So the new asset is... The original cost, if I scroll up, $2.5 million blue, less the cash received, half a million. But also in that formula is the $250,000 gain recognized. So it's $2.5 million plus the $250,000 gain 
less cash received of a half a million. <clears throat> that is the debit that we post for the value of the new asset. We debit for cash received. We credit to remove the old asset from the books at its original cost or book value. We need a credit to make debits equal credits. We have a gain on exchange. That's as far as we'll get on these non-monetary exchanges. Remember, if you go to the website, stltest.net, that we have our accounting video textbooks. There are two of them up here right now. Accounting for Investments and Advanced Accounting. You'll receive an MP4 with the entire course. You'll see below how long the courses are. You'll also get all the Excel documents that were used to make the courses, and you'll get a practice exam with the answers to the practice exam answered in the video. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.